Hi everyone, Liz Dahlia here, aka the Queen of Hearts. Welcome to my channel, especially those of you who are, new, who are new. Today we are doing something a little bit different for the channel. We're reacting to the Marvel panel that happened the other day at San Diego Comic Con. So for the world of geek and pop culture, one of the biggest events of the year is the San Diego Comic Con. And it is where there's usually a whole bunch of announcements and trailers and all the big studios will usually come out and they'll do some sort of representation of all the things that they are trying to promote that's going to be coming up in the next year or two. And they get everybody all hyped and excited about all the things that are going to be happening. I purposely avoided the Marvel panel because I hadn't seen Deadpool and Wolverine yet and I was so, so nervous that there were going to be spoilers for that movie. I saw the movie yesterday. I will link the reaction that I had to it in the card above. It Suffice it to say, oh my god, it is so good. I loved it. And uh, if you're a fan of Deadpool series, if you're a fan of the Fox studio movies that they had done um and you'll understand all those references you will love you'll love this movie love it it was spinal tap 11 out of 10 it was great but i avoided the panel because i didn't want to have any spoilers for that movie i've now seen it so i am now completely free and clear to be checking out the panel for marvel and finding out what is going to be on the cards coming moving forward with the um, the MCU. So I'm super excited to be finding out what we have in store. It's always filled with so much information. There's always so much speculation that happens and I cannot wait to dive into it with you guys. Before I do those, a few things that you can be doing that would really mean a lot here at the channel. Like the video and let me know you want to see more panel reactions like this one. Consider subscribing if you're not already. We're trying to build our way towards our first 1000 subscribers so it would really mean a lot if you could subscribe and hit the notification bell make sure you select the all button so you don't miss out on any of the other reactions that we do here on the channel all right we're going to just dive straight into it i i do have a few things that i think that they're going to talk about i obviously they're going to talk about deadpool and wolverine at some point um, I think they'll probably talk about the new Captain America movie that we have coming out. They've released a trailer for that already. Um, so I don't know if they'll release a brand new trailer, but they'll definitely be talking about the movie and trying to hype that up. Um, I do think we have like a Fantastic Four movie is in the works. So I'm hoping we'll get maybe some casting news from that. Um, I don't know if we've got any, if we've heard any word about what they're doing with the new Blade movie. Um, so whether or not we'll hear anything about that. Um, and I can't remember the other thing. And probably the new Avengers. There's like, I know that they've got some more things in the works for the next Avengers movie. Um, and Young Avengers as well. So yeah. I, oh, and Thunderbirds. Th Thunderbolt. Thun Thunderbolt, not Thunderbirds, Thunderbolt, <laughs> the Thunderbolts, that movie as well. So there's a few things that are, I know are in the works that I'm hoping to hear some information about. Um, but yeah, what exactly? I don't know. Let's let's bring up the heart rate monitor. So anybody who is new to my channel, I use a heart rate monitor. It is via my Apple Watch and that way you guys get to see what moments get my heart pumping. Let's bring up the panel. All right, let's check it out. Marvel Studios, what have you got for us? Uh, a gospel choir, <laughs> red and yeah, I'm guessing that was for Deadpool and Wolverine. Good old Kevin. Ah, uh, Peter Pool. <laughs> that was great. Spoiler for Peter Paul, <laughs> if you haven't seen Deadpool and Wolverine. God damn it, Marvel. Oh, he's going to be moderating the thing. Okay. 
Yes, I saw that yesterday. It was great. Wow, that's massive. We had a great time here on Thursday. We had a great drone show, and they presented us after. Did you guys see this drone show? It was gigantic. And there was a guy from the Guinness World Book of Records who came out and handed you just to see on my these plaques. We didn't really do the drone show. We got plaques because it was the biggest fictional character drone show ever, uh, which is cool. Woo! Guinness Book. Uh, but you know what I like? Tell us what the, we need to know, Kevin. Stop all the preamble. Yes. Okay, three movies. Here we go. Captain America. We've, they re released the trailer for this recently, or a new trailer for this. I'll link the reaction to that in the card above. I did not hear what he said. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, please, Mr. Tim Blake Nelson. Who's that? Captain, my captain. So I'm guessing he's no. Oh, that's big brain. Of course we remember it, Kevin. The brain of a brawn. So he keeps that counseling, he keeps that approach throughout the course of the character and all of the films. Right on. Now, Tim, if okay. Okay. I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a pause. Yes. He's waited a long time to come back. No. Understand that. Uh, they 
I mean, people waited a long time, so. It's like, I'm just going to walk away from you. <laughs> okay. So they give each other a lot of crap behind the scenes. Okay. Like a spoiler thing a while back. At like a, a convention, he said something and alluded that he was going to be in the MCU. Yeah, there was a speech about who was going to be maybe like in fact Fantastic Four, like Doom or something. Who? Educate me. Teach me who is side. Who's who's this? Who's Sidewinder? I don't know who that is. I don't understand. Okay. I feel like sometimes Anthony is not actually really answering the question. Who? And that's when they cut it out and we don't get to see it! God damn it, what did they see? What were they shown? Um, I wonder, are they talking about Harrison Ford? Harrison Ford's sick with COVID? Or is this Harrison? There we go, okay. Then who else? Who were they talking about before? I missed it. I don't know. What did they say? What did they say? Ah! Hey, Red Hulk. Okay, they saw Red Hulk. <laughs> What? I don't know what he just said. I don't know what he's 
going on right now? <laughs> I had a really good time working in the Marvel Universe, and I wanted a piece of the action. <laughs> and I'm very proud to be uh, in this film. I think it has turned out to be fantastic. <laughs> Marvel <Marvelous. laughs> <laughs> right, Thank you, guys. That's the cast of Captain America, Brave New World. Thank you. He's like, get him off, get him off, get him off. <laughs> yeah. Just, just when I think my my dream of nerdy life can't get any more complete, I hear Harrison Ford say adamantium. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that, so that's um, Baroness. Yay! Our new Black Widow! Love her! Love her! David. <laughs> it still fits. <laughs>
Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kevin, help me understand this. Harrison Ford is playing President Thunderbolt Ross in Brave New World, but he's not actually in Thunderbolt. What's going on? Okay. That is correct. Mr. Ford plays Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, and these one of my play the Thunderbolts because sometimes in 85 years of comic history, writers and artists use the same name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. You want me to tell them that we we don't cut? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. You have to see the movie. <laughs> hey, right. Very nice. I have some suspicious thoughts. I, I hope you said boots and not boobs. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, with that, Florence, a lot of these characters don't necessarily play well with others. What can you tell us about the team dynamic? That's the joy of watching them together, is that they don't play well together. Um, in terms of their dynamics, I mean, we had a, a, a real ride because we actually loved working with each other and we clearly understand each other because we've all accidentally matched Bar Lewis. <laughs> totally. Oh, Lewis. <laughs> the Geraldine and Lewis, welcome to the MCU. Yeah, who are they playing? Probably nothing. They've gotten very good at the non-answers. What can you say about your character's heel turn? Well, it's good to be back. Um, oh, I love her. She's such a great actress. I loved her in... Um, actors and characters as well. It's been such an honour and a pleasure. And where we left... Killjoys. Great in Killjoys. <laughs> Vancouver, who does Red Guardian and Green Goblin exclusively. <laughs> email, email me that. Um, hey, Wyatt, what can you tease about your character in Thunderbolt? Everyone's going to fucking love me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he was in um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He was 
the okay. I was trying to remember who he was. <laughs> I, I, I want to reiterate what Wyatt said about this group of people. I had one of the greatest experiences of my life working on this movie as well. They're all wonderful, but I do have a favorite. And uh, her name is Florence Pugh. And, um, Apparently she's everybody's favorite, sounds like. Which, you know, uh, don't blame anybody at all. She's actress you may hear more about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she is just electric to work with. And I think that complexity relationship this time around. We got to go to all these different levels. I mean, there's like warmth and humor, but there's also a lot of pathos between the fact that, uh, you know, he's a terrible narcissist who has a hard time showing up for other people, and she's very dedicated to killing people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm so jealous of what I'd like to see. And I would like to say that um, the first time I was here was four years ago, and, and that's the last time I was here. And I remember the energy that all of you guys gave us, and it honestly lived in me for about a year after. And I just want to say thank you so much for all of you being here and for giving us the energy again. I'm so jealous. I want to see it so bad. You want to see it so bad? God dang. What was the other one that's coming out? Is it going to be Fantastic Four? Somebody said something about my hat. One year from today, exactly one year from this weekend, we are releasing the first Marvel's first family to the MCU, the Fantastic Four. Ah, uh, there we go, Fantastic Four. We have, not, we have not even started filming this yet. It starts filming Tuesday 
in the UK. Okay. Pedro was there and sent a picture with all of them. You saw that online. But our director, our director was willing to fly all through the night to be here with you, ladies and gentlemen, our director, Matt Jackson. I forgot that they'd announced the, um, like who's playing the family. I'm so away. I'm still standing. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Matt. Fantastic four have some of the most iconic powers in Marvel history, from Reed's stretchy limbs to Johnny's fire abilities. How do you want to bring those powers to life on screen? Uh, I mean, I, I love the Fantastic Four. I love their power set, and it's one of the things that we've worked the hardest on, because we want to be true to the comics, but we also want to be true to life. We want to root it in physics and anatomy and all those things that can make it feel incredibly real. So we've done tons of tests and concept art and storyboarding and VFX tests and research. We've talked to scientists, we've talked to animal experts, we've talked to everybody. We've gone out into the desert to find the best rock to make the thing from, right? Um, we've done everything we can. Interesting. Right on. And nice. We've been through the decades with WandaVision, and we know that <sighs> He did such a great job. I don't know what he did with it, but Wonder Vision was fantastic. One of my favorite TV series. Were there any 60s details you wanted to make sure to include? I mean, the same approach to the powers. We want to, we want to do our research. We want to be authentic. We want to bring it to life in a very real way. But at the same time, we also are not doing just the 60s, right? We're doing a retro future 60s. So a lot of it was about finding inspiration from the futurists of that time, especially Sid Mead, and using that as a inspiration to build a whole new world that is part of the New York oh. that you know from the 60s and something you've never seen before. But okay. just the visual aesthetics, uh, the 60s to me is all about optimism. It's about looking to the stars and about dreaming about traveling in space. It's about how with the right heart and the right mind you can do anything, which is what the Fantastic Four is all about. And so it's more about capturing the spirit and the tone, which is not a bad segue because I put something together for you guys. Okay. And we haven't started shooting yet, but we put together a little bit of pre-shoot stuff, some animatics. We, we, we kind of cobbled together something to give you a sense of what this movie will be about. Um, and so, do you guys want to see it? Yes, but I'm not going to get to because it's only for the people who get to go to Comic-Con, but I live in Australia and that is, like, hugely expensive and I would never get to go. And that amazing music you heard was our composer, Mike Pacino. God. Yay! For them, I guess. A fan. <laughs> Yay! I, so, I can't remember, is, is he the thing or is he the human torch? I, I missed it at the beginning. And Mr. Fantastic, Pedro Yay! <laughs> this is the first time all in public Marvel. I know, that's the torch, I think. Yes. He, he looks younger. So, yeah, that would be thing. Torch. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> hey, Evan, I got a question for you. What was your reaction the first time you saw yourself in a super suit? Oh, uh, I don't know. I feel like that was uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, still, I'm still processing it. You, know? you, 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 you got to give me a few more hours. <laughs> hey Pedro, you've had a role in some pretty Yeah Just say his name and they'll scream.
And um, we started with the same talent manager, actually, and he almost became my roommate in 1999. He came and he saw the place and was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's different. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> what am I going to it? I think we all collectively going to bring uh, an essence that is a family, rather than thinking about what we individually are going to bring. We're, it's a team sport, this, and we're all going to work very hard to bring a feeling of a family to this, to this film. That's what it needs. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you start shooting on Monday back in the UK. Don't you have to get to we, we gotta go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they, they literally have to fly back. The good thing about that is they have their own fantastic car. Which is <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. Is it like a balloon or is it a projection? <laughs> is it a hologram? Or is it a balloon? <laughs> All right, guys, we are literally going back right now. That's the one to start shooting the Fantastic Four. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. Yes, of course, with you, Kevin. Ah, 
Uh, we got the Russo brothers. Okay. Nice. They did a great job with the other one, so. Oh my god. We missed you guys. Nice having back. <laughs> when we directed Avengers Endgame, Joe and I truly believed that it was the end of the road for us in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because we had put all of our passion, all of our love, all of our imagination into the Winter Soldier, into Civil War, into Infinity War, climaxing all of it with Avengers Endgame. That, that four movie run was incredible left us creatively spent with all of our emotions on the floor. In the time since, through a very special story, Joe and I have come to potentially see a road forward with you. Yeah. Uh, and it's the biggest story that Marvel Comics ever told. It's the first comic book run that I read as a kid that made me fall in love with comics. It's the reason that Ant and I are standing up here. And I think you all know the name of it. Uh. The name is... Okay. Okay. Secret Wars. Nice. Okay. That should be good. A good face. <laughs> I mean, we already knew one of the names. Secret Wars is incredibly ambitious. The magnitude of the filmmaking, the vastness of the storytelling, world colliding epicness. All of this made Joe and I understand that we would need to make another essential movie first in order for all of us to be ready for Secret Wars. Yeah, okay. There is one very, very important character that is required to, to do Secret Wars justice. And it's a character that Marvel has not introduced yet. Okay. And it could be the most important character in all of the Marvel universe. Come on. Gimme, 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 gimme. Wait for it. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Nice. Doom, we're getting doom. All right. Listen, if, if we're going to bring Victor Von Doom to the screen, and he is, he is more, he's one of the more complex characters in all comics, right, Kevin? I mean, this is potentially one of the more entertaining characters in all of fiction. If we're going to do this, if we're going to bring him to movie theaters worldwide, then I think we're going to need the greatest actor in the world. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Way to build them up. As proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi universe. Okay. The one person who could play Victor Von Doom. No! No freaking way! No. Ah. 
This is, uh, this is, get, uh, I just, I just, I'm we will see you in two years. My mind is blown. My mind. My mind. My mind is blown. Does anybody have any questions? I have many questions, Kevin. Many, many questions. I have many, many, many questions, Kevin. Many questions. Okay. So, I don't know whether or not that is a good idea. Having Robert Downey Jr. as Victor Von Doom. So, he did such an iconic, fantastic job playing Iron Man. And even though I know Victor Von Doom is a very, very different character from um, from Tony Stark, they are both very narcissistic characters, very much the type of character where, like, I know I'm right. And... I feel like even the there's going to be too many similarities I feel between Stark and Von Doom. He he's I'm leaning towards that he would play it a little bit more closer to what he played Sherlock Holmes and like he's a very intelligent man but he's also very sort of stoic um and you know doesn't show a lot of and very calculating and stuff versus um Stark was a little bit more like stick it to the man kind of character um and and like rebelling against authority and I'm the showman sort of thing versus I don't feel like that's the way to do it with Von Doom and even though I know he's done stuff like that before I'm not it's going to be really hard to separate him from Tony Stark it's going to be really really hard so Yes, I know they have the multiverse and everything and we have this whole concept of um, ver uh, like, I get it, but I just, I don't know if this was the right way to go. Honestly, I don't think this was the right way to go. I feel like they needed to have a brand new actor in this part that doesn't already have so much associated with them in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, I don't, I'm, this is probably the first time that I've heard a casting announcement in a Marvel um, property that I've gone, that I've really felt that they've, they've missed the ball. Most of the other ones I've just, you know, been if the doubt or they've had a really good actor and, like, I have faith that this person will, will do a great job. This is the first time that, like, yeah, I know he's probably good and can. I just, there's too much baggage. There's too much baggage there with this with this character. Um, of the, th the three other movies that they, of the other movies that they discussed, um, the Captain America one, and I wasn't a huge fan of the discussion that we had with that. Some of the, the banter and stuff with, uh, Anthony Mackie and the and the other. The, nah. I mean, it was funny, but 
so many non answers for everything, which kind of gets really annoying. Um, and I definitely felt like Kevin kind of rushed, rushed them off after Harrison said like a thing and looked like he was struggling to say like anything. So they just got him off as quickly as possible. So they didn't have to answer any more questions. Um, or they were like, it was like bad timing, but it, yeah, it just, that was very much, I felt like he was rushing them off. Um, I do have high hopes for Thunderbolts. I liked everything that we saw with them. Um, I don't know who the, the two new additions were. I don't know who they're meant to be playing or what their skill set is meant to be. So if you know, please let me know. Um, and I'm excited for the characters that we have already met and already seen and seeing them again in this movie. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I do find the whole Thunderbolts thing to be very confusing. The like my understanding was that it was connected to Thunderbolt Ross, um, and like it was him that was putting this together, or that it was connected to him in some way. Hence why it's called Thunderbolts. But I'm guessing that's what the asterisk is for. Like they're going to explain that um it, during the movie to try uh, I don't know I just find that whole thing very thing I'm wondering whether or not they would have done it if it wasn't for the fact that um the original actor who played Thaddeus Ross had passed away and yes they've got Harrison Ford now but maybe they weren't able to get him to do stuff for that as well I don't know but um yeah it just seems a little weird that they've they've done that and very confusing for the audience if you're not going to have them con connected um it just seems a weird and marvel usually doesn't do things that are going to they're usually fairly good at trying to make sure that they have things adequately explained for non-comic book readers like myself so um yeah i understand that they're dealing with decades upon decades of stories and people you know, sometimes names are used in multiple times in multiple scenarios, but I was pretty sure that this is one of those occasions where it was actually because of that specific character that you already have in your universe, that you've already established is a bad guy, and that you've already established is, like, capable of putting a team like this together. Why not just have him put the team together? It's named after him, but he doesn't run it. He gets her to run it. Like, you you can have a tense gent... You can just have her be on the phone with him, taking the orders from him, establishing the thing. Like, you don't have to have him in the movie and still have him connected, and therefore it would make sense to the audience. And you don't need to do a weird explanation as to, well, after all these years, they've just, you know, they just reused the name. No, just have it be the same person. Just have a bead after the thing. It's not that hard. And it's less confusing for your audience. Um, this, the things that they're doing for the Fantastic Four I'm excited about. Um, I like... Not that I like, but I find it really interesting how they're trying to differentiate themselves from the previous Fantastic Four movies. We've had uh, two very different iterations, two very different cast two different approaches and uh, apparently the approach for this one is a not only is it in the 60s but b these guys are a family because they weren't all a family before um so <laughs> i don't know how that's meant to make things different and how that's meant to make them look different or act different but apparently it makes a difference so um we'll wait and see We'll see what happens when it when it eventually comes out, um, and yeah, the the news about Von Doom, um, interesting. I I, I still uh, am firm against the idea. I just I honestly don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you on board? with Robert Downey Jr. being our Victor Von Doom, or do you agree with me and think that there's too much baggage with him associated in the MCU? Tony Stark is still too fresh in everybody's mind that seeing him play another character who is also very narcissistic like Tony Stark, it's just going to seem too much like the same character. Like... 
yeah, I, I'm, I feel like I'm really going to struggle with this one. Um, but let me know what you think. Give this video a thumbs up. It'll let me know that you want to see more panel reactions like this one. Consider subscribing if you're not already. We're trying to build our way towards 1,000 subs. And hit the notification bell. Make sure you select the all button. So you don't miss any of my reactions to any of my future videos. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will catch you next time. Bye.